Thank you to the American Philatelic Society for their support in the making of this video. For information on membership and APS services, visit stamps.org. Since 1980, China has annually issued zodiac stamps for the Chinese New Year. The series of stamps features the Chinese zodiac sign of that year, and these stunning commemoratives not only celebrate the New Year ahead, they give us a fun and fascinating look into Chinese culture. Actually, countries around the world issue Chinese New Year stamps. Japan has been doing it long before China, and even countries such as the United States celebrate the Chinese New Year through postage stamps. But it's China's series that is issued in January of each year that attracts the most attention from collectors, and not surprisingly, the non-collector as well. There are 12 zodiac signs based on a 12-year cycle following the Chinese lunar calendar, each set to determine the character and fortune of a person born in that year. The 12 signs are animals that include a rat, a horse, a dog, an ox, and even a dragon. Okay, so 11 animals and one mythological creature. Since learning about these stamps, I've developed a very strong interest in them and admire them for their charm and beauty. So in order to learn a bit about the Chinese zodiac and its origin, let's turn to story time where we can discuss the great race. Yay! <laughs> There are several different versions of the great race, a story on how the years were named after each animal. The popular version that I'm familiar with involves the Jade Emperor, who is basically the equivalent of a god. And he announces that there's going to be a race to determine the years of the calendar. Each year would be named in the order that the animal finished the race. The race involved a swim across a river. Of course, some animals can swim and some cannot, so you'd think this race was unfair, but this relied on ingenuity and cooperation. It was a test far greater than just athletic skills. At the very start of the race, the cat and the rat, who were pretty bad swimmers, climbed onto the ox's back, who was pretty good at crossing rivers, and so they began to make their way. Now, the big controversy of the race is about to happen because the rat was very competitive and pushed the cat into the river. Since the cat can't swim, the cat was unable to finish the race, and therefore there's no cat in the Chinese zodiac. But the rat was quite comfortable on the ox as they crossed the river, and once the ox made it to the other side, the rat jumped off and sprinted to the finish line. The Jade Emperor awarded the rat with year one. Of course, the cat was extremely upset, and that is the reason why today, cats chase rats. It's to get their revenge. Now there's another version to the story where the cat and the rat were actually friends and the cat asked the rat to wake it up in the morning but the rat chose not to and just ran the race without it. Anyway, both result in the cat not finishing and the rat winning the first year. Now shortly behind the rat was the ox. The Jade Emperor awarded the ox the second year followed by the tiger, then the rabbit, and then the dragon. Now, you would think that the dragon who could fly would dominate the race, but the dragon actually had to stop along the way and help some villagers out in China by making it rain before finishing the race after the rabbit. The Jade Emperor was most pleased with the dragon and awarded it the fifth year. Next in line came the snake, followed by the horse, then the goat, the monkey, the rooster, and then the dog. Each of these has their own story as to why they came in that position. For instance, the dog should have been the fastest swimmer, but was too easily distracted in the water having fun. Regardless, it was still able to finish the race and get the 11th year right before the pig who made the 12th and final year. 
Go look up the different versions of the great race to learn about why each of the animals came in that order. And it helps to explain a bit about the personalities associated with that birth year. For instance, the rat is supposed to be quick-witted and resourceful, while the ox is dependable, diligent, and determined. I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm a tiger, of course. You know, brave, uh, competitive, uh, charming, and well-liked. What are you? Comments below. Just like the monthly zodiac in the West, the Chinese zodiac is used to provide insight into compatibility. Each of the animals have good and bad matches, and this can help decide on future partners. China has continued a tradition of issuing beautiful stamps for the Chinese New Year, featuring the zodiac signs since 1980. This happened to be the ninth year in the Chinese zodiac cycle, the year of the monkey. This actually brings up an important point for the stamp collector. While the Chinese zodiac begins with the rat and ends with the pig, a full set of China zodiac stamps actually begin with the monkey and end with the goat since it began in 1980 with the year of the monkey. Ah, so the 1980 monkey stamp. This is perhaps one of China's most iconic and beloved stamps. It's affectionately known as the red monkey stamp or the golden monkey stamp. It's my favorite. It's beautiful. It's simple. It's got a classic look and it's one of the most sought after Chinese stamps. The creator of the original artwork, Huang Yonghu, a famous painter with a complicated history, painted this little realistic monkey looking sad and lonely, but very, very cute. As I mentioned, it's an iconic stamp for China and it's loved by philatelists all over the world. According to some articles, the painter actually commemorated a little pet monkey who lived with him and kept him company while he was drawing and painting. The monkey really stands out and catches your eye, partly because of the bright red background, but also because of the simple brush strokes that shine and bring the whole image to life. I'm not the only one who loves this stamp. As I mentioned, it's highly sought after by collectors and therefore it's pretty expensive, which is kind of different from other expensive stamps because firstly, it was issued in 1980, not 1880. It's not from the classical era of stamps, pre-1940 when most of the expensive stamps have been issued. Also, there's no error associated with this stamp. It's not like there was a mistake made or it had to be pulled from circulation due to changed circumstances. Also, it's not that rare. Well, it's rare in the sense that there's a high demand and a low supply, but 5 million were issued, which is not a lot, but it's not 500. So it stands out as being unique to the stamp market. Now, why is it so popular? Well, it's an awesome stamp, sure, and it's the first of the Chinese Zodiac series. But another reason is that the Chinese regard this as a very special stamp due to its imagery. What's China's luckiest color? It's red. China's luckiest number is eight. And the monkey is considered to be one of the most powerful zodiacs in the calendar. It's part of the first trine, which consists of the rat, the dragon, and the monkey. All three are supposed to be compatible with each other, and people born in one of those years are the most capable of doing something successful with their lives. Monkeys also have a special place in Chinese folklore. A fictional character, Sun Wukong, who is known as the Monkey King, is a powerful being in Chinese literature, depicted in the novel Journey to the West. It's also just an adorable stamp. <laughs> Interestingly, 36 years later, in 2016, it was once again the year of the monkey. The same artist of the 1980 Golden Monkey stamp helped to design the 2016 monkey stamps. These two. What really makes it interesting is this one in particular. It's a monkey holding two children. China had a one-child policy in place, limiting families to just having one child for the most part, a form of population planning. Anyway, it came to an end allowing for two children in 2016, the year that these stamps were issued, featuring this monkey with two children. Not a coincidence at all, the artist intended to symbolize this occasion, this change in policy on the stamp. But what could be a coincidence is that the first stamp that the artist produced in 1980 featuring the little lonely sad monkey on the red stamp could symbolize the time when the one child policy was starting in 1979 because 1980 was the year that the one child policy took effect. So here we have two monkey year stamps 36 years apart. 
During this time, China went through important economic reform and changes. These two stamps, you could say, symbolize one of those changes being that of a family planning policy. So you can see why the stamp is so popular. It's the artwork itself, its meaning in the zodiac, the quality of the stamp and what it can symbolize. It's just an amazing stamp and it's in such high demand that there are countless replicas and forgeries out there, like, like a lot. You have to be careful who and where you buy them from because these are offered on platforms such as eBay expecting to get the high prices that are paid for the original. There are also plenty of Cinderella souvenirs out there as well. So just be careful and try to look for the stamp from a reputable dealer to be safe. Look out for Chinese New Year stamps from China and all over the world. Collect them all or just collect your sign. And look in the video description for links to more articles and resources to learn about the Chinese Zodiac and New Year's stamps. Thanks for watching and happy collecting.